Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Spiritual Fluffers. Remember to check our website out at spiritualfluffers.love if you haven't already. And welcome to the episode of Which is Your Spiritual Anchor of Choice? And how does it manifest? And how does it manifest? <laughs> Jason, which is your spiritual anchor of choice? Oh, I, I choose quite a few of them. Usually it comes in uh, the comedian aspect. But... Oh, I think we're both <laughs> definitely the comedians. <laughs> but sometimes, again, it'll take a, intellectual elitism. We can always have that. Um, sometimes it's the old man syndrome or the crone. But we'll go through them. We'll go through each one separately and say, these aren't bad, but this try to catch yourself doing them. Um, so we'll go through, we've already talked about the enabler ones, where there's a divine masculine and divine feminine, some feminine, <laughs> feminine one. Um, and the masculine one would be the enabler or fixer, where you're like, oh, I'm going to try to fix you. I got this. Don't need to work on myself because I'm going to fix other people. Got it. I've got it. Yep, <laughs> oh. yep. Here, let me fix you. Here. Let me fix you. Here, let me fix you. <laughs> Jump on my back so I can uh, make you run across this imaginary finish line. <laughs> I got this. So, but again, usually that's, again, it's not a bad anchor. It's just an anchor that we use to not focus in on ourselves. Right. And that's basically the ego manifesting itself. In a fun way. <laughs> a fun way. Um, and then, I, so we'll go through, again, enablers, divine masculine would be the fixer. Divine feminine would be uh, the chameleon, where, you're, again, you're saying, okay, I need to bend over backwards to do this. This is also very true. Both these usually take on a Christian element of, I'm putting myself up on the cross, and I'm doing this to sacrifice myself. But really, you're just doing it to prevent your own spiritual development. Well, and I definitely say, I know we're joking about the archetype that I tend towards is the comedian. Um, I definitely tend towards the intellectual elitist as well. But but in my uh, personal relationships, um, I, I'm always have been the enabler yep. uh, from the divine feminine, actually, which is ironic because I tend to be a fixer in all my other relationships. But in my in my close, close personal relationships, my intimate partner relationships, I'm, I definitely go to chameleon. Yeah. And I sort of literally just mold myself into who you are and what you like to do and what are the TV shows you watch and whatever. And I literally, I'll, I'll come out of relationships and be like, why did I just spend three years watching Impractical Jokers? <laughs> the dumbest show ever <laughs> no offense in practical jokers my child loves it it's yes. fine but i'm saying it's just not me it's not something i would sit and watch but because this person i was with loved it i'm like yes oh, i love yes. this show this is wonderful <laughs> but and again none of this is bad it's just we need to recognize it in ourselves because you're never going to get fully rid of any of this stuff, but we'd like you to spend at least 10% of your time working on yourself or 20% right. or 30%. Well, and I think it's, it's we can move away from the bad-good dichotomy in mm -hmm. that it's not that it's bad that I would sit and open myself to a new TV show or to something that somebody else watched, but I don't necessarily have to pour my whole being into that person's mm -hmm. persona. And I think that's the piece of it that I think if you can start to do a little work on yourself, do some meditation five or ten minutes a day, really go within and ask yourself, you know, are you being authentic? Are you tapping into your own divine source power to co-create life? You know, or are you choosing to be a victim as we've talked about in other episodes? Or are you staying in a low love level as we've talked about in other episodes? Or am I really diving into this archetype of being an enabler and just literally pouring my whole existence into somebody else? For no reason other than to do it because that's the way you... It feels good, I guess, or it's comfortable, and, or right? Yeah, and again, we'll, we'll fall back into these patterns, these archetypes, just because it's, it's who we are and we don't really know where to go from there. And again, we're not saying don't do them, we're just saying be aware of them. Recognize, yeah. yeah. So the point of today's episode is for us to share a few of them with you so that you could actually begin to think about and recognize which of the Jungian archetypes do you actually fall into yeah. regularly? And is there a way for you to potentially think about um, stepping back a little bit from it, not necessarily blindly continually falling into it? So as we've said, we've already had one, one episode completely dedicated to enabling uh, empaths and enablers. So go see that one there. We'll put the link right below on this. 
So what about this one around being an old man or a crone? Um, I, again, we just uh, like kind of created these ones of this is kind of what we do when we were like, oh, because I, I, at, at our soul level, we want to change. We want to grow. We want to progress. But there's going to be archetypes that are like, oh, no, we aren't. So I, I called one the old man and the old crone just to, again, define it as masculine and feminine. And it's because I hear most of the old men say this. Um, old man would be like, oh, I can't change. I'm too set in my ways. I can't do this. And you're like, um, that's actually theoretically impossible about not changing because you're constantly changing. <laughs> Either, even if it's on an incremental level, Yeah, life literally. is transient. <laughs> yes. So this idea that you can't change again. But we all have this in us. Like we do that. We'll say... Oh, I can't go to... I'm just set in my ways. Or... I can't do improv because I can't handle crowds. And you're like, um, is there gunshots shooting at you? Yeah, uh, yeah. No, no, anyone can do it. Like, trust me, I can easily look like a fool in front of people. Yeah. I can do that. I've got <laughs> yeah. it. Yeah. Um, so again, it's just this old man, but you can actually hear the old man and eventually you will use visualizations to expose it where you'll actually see the old man saying, oh, I can't do that. I can't. I can't go out on a Tuesday and hang out with friends or that's a really great example actually and we do I think it's a really great way to um, sort of bring these archetypes down to reality and you're not necessarily an old man no. but this archetype of being set in your ways and mm -hmm. being insistent upon doing things a certain way or sometimes from the Christian community it was very legalistic like yep. it needs to be done this way and I think that example of you know oh it's a Tuesday night and my friends have invited me out to happy hour well I can't go do that I've got to work tomorrow and yeah. well you you can I mean yeah. you could still be in yes. bed by 10 and yeah. do what you need to do I mean it's like it's it's so try and catch yourself when yeah. you hear yourself thinking in in your head around when something new comes your way how do you react to that do you immediately go oh I couldn't do that or is it oh I could consider that kind of thing yeah and it really is your your ego manifesting itself to say uh, I'm not changing at all and so it's taking yeah. on these these things being like me you're not doing that because that might change me and I don't want to change yeah yeah so again just be aware of it and say oh okay well I don't need to that doesn't mean I have to go out every night but it does mean that I have to try new things and and try to again break my matrix by trying new things I, again like for me improv class I was like oh, I'm not gonna I can't do that and then and then you did yeah and then I did and again and you're was, really good at it it's it very easy to look dumb on stage <laughs> It's much easier it's than any talent. of us understood. It's, it's your talent. talent. <laughs> so easy to look dumb on stage. I'm actually quite good at it. Very good. Uh, <laughs> so what about the what about the divine feminine aspect of this one, the old man versus the crone, which yeah. in the goddess um, vernacular it's the maid, the maiden, and the crone, and the crone represents the older wise woman. Yeah. So what is the archetype here around the crown? We're using it, again, we're using all these as negative aspects. We're not using any of, again, negative is a bad word, but again, like ones that will hold your progress back. Old crone would be almost more of a victim mentality of being like, I was hurt, the world kind of sucks, therefore I shouldn't. Yeah. Um, and we all have this. Like, again, there's no... Again, we're all spiritual trannies if we want to use divine masculine and divine feminine. All of us, yeah. We're, it's, it's the reason we exist is because we are not one-dimensional creatures. We're infinite in nature. Therefore, we all have these aspects. So, again, don't get stuck on the word so much as this voice in your head that will say, you know... I'm not going to try. I mean, I'm in that relationship stage where, like, you know, if I'm willing to get into another, there is a significant part of me that's like, just give up. Just don't even try. Yeah, like, like it's like never everyone, gonna work. Everyone out. sucks. Yeah. Men suck. Women suck. Just everyone it. sucks yep. except for dolphins. Dolphins are amazing. Dolphins are amazing. Yeah. Besides that, um, but um, but yeah, I mean, again, it, it's just that. Again, you'll hear it in your. You'll hear that voice in your head. Your e But again, it's just your ego, like saying, "I don't want to get burnt on the stove again. Stop touching the stove." And yeah. On a spiritual level, no, keep on touching the stove. It's not a big deal. Yeah, yeah. Like, I mean, try new things. Try, try to, try to do different stuff. Try to break your matrix because, again, that's the whole point of existence: is to actually become the creator to become the painting and the can the painter and the canvas yeah um and again uh, so I, I would say those we've covered those two we can yep. go a little bit more detailed in those again don't 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 get caught up in the 
the divine masculine or divine right. feminine. Just hear the voice. Just hear it. which one is it. Am I rejecting it because I'm set in my ways or am I hermiting myself because I'm just, just devastated from the world and I can't right. take any more of and it. And sometimes these voices are going to be actually accurate and be like, oh yeah, I shouldn't go out and, you know. And like, that's okay. Like, I, I shouldn't mean, do but, crystal math. Right. Or like start. legitimately calculate the risk. <laughs> yeah. But if it's a safe invite, if it's, you know, like you said, if it's, if it's a healthy, productive way to bust up your matrix a little bit, do it. Do it. Yeah. 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 And again, this is, it's our inertia that's actually trying to say, no, you can't do it. Which mm. is why we're calling these your anchors. Which yeah. spiritual anchor are you, which one's pulling you back? Yeah. So the next one up is the intellectual elitist. So basically the intellectual elitist, you have intellectual elitist saying, um, I don't need to know this. Um, there's no need. What, what's the point? What's the point of existence? Why do I need to know that? And again, I think most of us can relate that to that on a computer level. <laughs> yes. Why um, do I need to? No. Why do I need to know <laughs> how to do this? Yes. I'm a luddite. Um, I don't need to know this. Um, I don't want to know this. And again, your brain—that's just your brain saying. It's putting a false quantitative measure on the pain of it. And it's, it, again, none of it's real. It's it's you just saying, oh, I can't do this. Or, eh, I don't want to do this. Yeah. Uh, I'm better. And then we have the other one that's The saying, other one is I'm better. I'm than, better than this. I don't need, like, yeah. Oh. Like, I'm beyond this. Why, I'm above this. Yeah. Why would I do guided meditations? I'm beyond that. That's yes. for children. Yes. You know, or something like that. And you're like, yeah, kind of it is. But they're actually very smart creatures. <laughs> <laughs> they're actually some of the happiest on the earth. Yeah. If you ever watched a playground full of children, yeah. they are more having more fun than any of us but, do. But we're more intelligent than they are. And we're better. <laughs> We don't need to learn from them. We need to be stuck in our ways because if we, if someone sees me as yes. as this, then it must be horrible. Yes. And so again, this is just again an anchor saying, why not do this right. again? And again, this is how these architects manifest. Is you're gonna hear one of them when you're like, eh. I just want to stay in bed. <laughs> yeah, totally. Um, and the last one we've got here is the one that you and I both identify with too, which is the comedian. Yep. So tell us a little bit about that. We 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 categorize these in two points. Uh, the uh, the comedian is one of them is just self depreciating humor. Yeah. Like we're all self deprecating. Ugh. We we yeah. all do it yeah. on a daily basis. I'm so stupid. I did this, yeah. and yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh gosh, my mom had this rule where she was like, "You guys can't call each other stupid," and then immediately she would uh, start calling herself stupid. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> and we're like, that is a good rule. Yes, <laughs> it's none of us should call ourselves yeah, stupid. It's an amazing Me rule. Or you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But again, we, we all do this and we'll all fall back on this. Oh, I can't learn this because I'm just dumb. Uh, yeah. I, I give up. And you play off, you play off your, you know, what you think are your flaws yeah. out in public. And that goes back to the series we did on the face and the secret self because we, we're we investing so much into what other people think of us. Yeah. And we base our own thoughts of ourselves on how others perceive us. So, so it's like get ahead of them making fun of me. I'm going to go ahead and make fun of myself yep. kind of thing. Create yeah. a, keep, keep that wall up. Yep. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Because it's so smart to keep it up. Um, and then the other one would be cynical on the world. Again, this would almost flow into old Chrome, but on a comedic standpoint of you, you're going to say, oh, the world, it kind of sucks. It's kind of a dick. Therefore, I shouldn't do anything. You won't let anything actually hit you through the face uh, secret self. Oh, we're doing that on love levels. Yeah. Um, yeah. Where, like, again, like, basically when love hits us or anything hits us, a new thing that would actually give us energy right. or feed our spirit, it'll hit our, at our, our face level and won't go through. And that's really these archetypes just blocking it and ninjing it quite a few of the times. So. Yeah, so make sure and take a look at the series that we're doing on love levels because this is exactly this anchoring that we're talking about is really also almost the the archetypes, the ninja archetypes that help you avoid actually encountering true love. Yeah. So if I'm, you know, I'm not, I can't change my ways, I'm never going to do this, and I'm never going to be exposing myself potentially 
to universal love from others or even from experience out in nature or some, you know, go skydiving type life changing experience that might be crazy beneficial for you. Or just something as simple as like walking on the beach. Exactly. Like, like you're like, oh, I can't do that. And you're like, um, yeah, you could wake up 30 minutes a day and go walk on the beach. Yeah. It's really not that different. Unless you live in like Ohio, then it'd be tough to walk on a beach. Yeah. But, but you can <laughs> get outside in nature. Yeah. Jason and I happen to be spoiled and living in Charleston. Yeah. So we can go walk on the beach. But, but yeah. you can do stuff like that. There's no reason. Go touch a tree. To. I yeah. mean, these days what I'm understanding is the, the power and energy and history that the trees around us hold is is amazing and so just go sit underneath a tree and have your lunch as yeah. it starts to warm it's up. really try to break it and again you'll hear these you'll hear a voice i guarantee it yes a little voice in the back of your head <laughs> a little spiritual anchor uh -huh. um and again that's what that's what will happen and then you'll start to once you start recognizing that we'll have visualization techniques on how to kind of work with it not against it because again you're playing chess against yourself so if you try to be like i'm not gonna <laughs> fight i'm gonna fight this really hard I, it doesn't work. it just makes it stronger yep so make sure to check out at spiritualfluffers.love we're gonna have an entire segment there of all of our guided meditations and we'll label and tag some of those meditations so that we can you will know which ones are going to be working with these spiritual anchors and which ones might be working with love level and things like that so um, thanks again for joining us. We hope you've yeah. enjoyed it. Please make sure and comment below if you happen to know which one of the spiritual anchors you are most prone to. Please feel free to put that in the comments below. Yeah. And and um, always remember to give us a thumbs up. Awesome. Also give a also uh, bu, 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 bu. Um, <laughs> also do um, basically tell a story about a funny oh, yeah. time. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. If you've got a funny story about one of the spiritual anchors, please offer it up. Laughter is one of the best ways to raise people's vibrations. So yep. if you can make someone else laugh, you're going to raise your own as well as theirs. Perfect. Thanks.